Welcome back to this tour of the brand new Lumix S1, in this case the S1R. We are now going to go through the menu system. I'm going to be going through these page by page. I'm going to focus only on the things that are new. Not going to go through every single option in here. Otherwise, this would take a very, very long time. And as it is, it's going to take a while. So with that said, let's just get started. You'll be able to see the menu system at all times up here. Sometimes I'll go full screen to show you some things I want to show you. But for the most part, I'm going to be here looking at this, and you're going to be looking at that up there. So with that said, let's jump into the menu. First thing you'll notice is there is a new paging system in here. So you have these pages followed by tabs and the menu options in here have been largely rearranged, hopefully grouped together in ways that make more sense. So if you're used to the Lumix interface, it is a very familiar interface, but some things have moved, so it may take a little while to find all the things that are in there that you want to find. With that said, we're going to go through these. I'm going to break these videos up into uh, pages, each one of these pages. So five different, well, four of them, that's just a custom setting. So four different pages on here, There'll be four different videos. If they're extra long, I'll cut them up even more. Here we go. Notice at the top of the tab where it says, like right, let's kind of do this, right up there it says image quality one, that is the name of this page of, of menu items. So that's where I'm going to kind of call that out. So in here you have your focus styles, same we've seen before, but there are some cool things about focus styles that's new, but we're not going to see that until later. Metering mode. There's a new metering mode, but I don't fully understand it. It doesn't seem to be working the way I would think it would, so I don't fully get it. Um, I need the manual. The manual doesn't exist yet. At least I don't have access to it. But it is this new system. It says, optimize exposure of the subject for highlighted areas of the frame and measure the whole frame evenly. So I think what this means is a kind of a highlight priority metering mode. It's odd because the icon is a spot meter with a little star next to it. So I that might be incorrect, but there is a new metering mode in here. Something kind of interesting to see. Aspect ratio. This is so funny. So I picked up one of these for the first time and I went, oh, someone set it to 3.2. It should be 4.3. And then I went, wait a minute. No, it's full frame. Full frame is 3.2. So for those of you who are used to micro four thirds, it's a 4.3 ratio. Full frame, of course, is a 3.2 ratio, which is what this is. So that 3.2 is the full full aspect ratio. You also have a new crop in here, the 65 to 24 crop, which gives you a super wide for doing stills. One of the neat things about shooting still photos on these cameras, same with the G series, when you're shooting a crop, when um, it, if you shoot JPEG, you're going to get the crop JPEG. But if you shoot raw, when you load it up into Lightroom, the entire file is still there. It's just the crop that you chose in camera is already applied, but you can uncrop it or recrop it, which is neat. And the same thing, of course, applies here. Picture quality, same as before, fine standard, raw plus fine, and so on. Um, picture size, you can do large, medium, and small, and this applies to the raws as well. So you can do smaller files if you don't want the full 46 and a half megapixel, which is incidentally is the highest resolution mirrorless DSLR in the world today. Woo, love that. HLG Photo is new. I don't have any way to show that to you. Hybrid Log Gamma, it is an HDR type of file. You get extended dynamic range, but it does require a HLG compatible TV to view it. So it's nothing that I can show you over YouTube, but it's mo bigger, mo better. That's kind of a cool thing. We'll, we'll talk about more about that at some point in a future show when I figure out a good way to show that to you. High resolution mode. This, the feature itself is not new, but there is a new mode in here. So you have two different modes, mode one and two. Mode one is what we've always had. Mode two is a mode that accommodates for motion in the scene. If you've ever used the high resolution mode, you've known that if anything moves in the scene, it totally messes up the file. Um, the reason for this is the way high res mode works is it takes eight, I think that's right, brain fart here, but I think it's right, eight photos, and then essentially stitches them together, but it's not a one, two, three type of a picture. It is doing this barely little pixel shift, and it's a whole thing about getting the different photo sensors uh, in, for each pixel exposed differently and shifting it all together and putting it together. I've done a whole video on that. Look for that on the channel. Um, anyway, what it does now in mode two is anything that moves, the camera obviously can detect that something has moved. It will then choose one of those frames and use that and scale up. Instead of rebuilding from moved pixels, it takes one set of those and scales those up to match the size of the rest of it. So anything that's moved will be slightly softer than the rest of it because it will have scaled it up. However, it will no longer be this weird pixely jumbled up mess. So you can do high res pictures with moving subjects in there. It's not meant to be like, you know, the car driving by, but trees moving and stuff like that you can now do. Uh, long exposure, nothing new in there, nothing new in any of this. Keep on going down. Um, autofocus settings, same as we had before. You have custom settings if you want them. Most people are just going to leave them in the default. Auto assist light. This is new. One area autofocus moving speed. So let me set this back to normal. And then I will do this. And as I move the focus point around, this is normal mode. So if you've used this before, that speed should look familiar to you. Now I can go into the menu. 
and set that to fast. And now, as I move this, it will move significantly faster. So you have a much higher speed movement for that. And again, I'll point out that you do now have diagonal movement as well, which is really, really neat. Okay, next up is see flash. So all the flash mode, nothing new in here, um, except to point out that you can access your wireless setup even though there's not a flash attached. No, it does not have wireless control built in. You still need to attach a controller, but you can access the setup controls from here. All right, photo settings, so bracketing, silent mode, nothing new there, image stabilizer. There is a new function in here. You have off, the standard normal one, and then a new auto. So before you had two stabilization modes, you had the, the main one, which stabilizes for up, down, and left and right movement. And then you had one that was only up, down movement. That was so if you're shooting panning stuff, because the problem if you're shooting panning, the stabilizer, if it's set for the one that does all, and you're panning the shot, it doesn't know that you're trying to pan. It just thinks that you're being sloppy with your movement. And so what would happen is you would see your scene locked as the camera's moving, your frame is locked, and then it would suddenly snap over to catch up because you'd move too far. You move beyond the capabilities of the sensor shift. So in, if you're shooting something that was panning side to side, you would switch it into that mode that only does up down detection, uh, up down stabilization. Now, instead of having a separate mode, it is simply a full on or an auto mode. I would say 99 times out of 100, you're probably going to want to leave it in full auto because what this does now is it gives you full up, down, left, right until you start to pan and it goes, oh, you're actually panning now and it turns off that side to side stabilization. Super, super nice. Uh, let's see here. And stabilization, that's all boost IS for video. It's the same as it was before. I forget what it was called before. It's simply been renamed. What this basically is, is a even more solid stabilization for not moving. It's not for trying to hold handheld moving slow kind of pans. It's more about just locking it as if it was on a tripod. It's like a virtual tripod mode. It's kind of crazy how stabilized it can get. Uh, burst shot settings. You've got your single exposure. You have two presets and just like on the G9 and then you have your time lapse and self timer mode. So these two modes here one and two are programmable. Those are burst shot setting one and two so you can set them from low, medium, high or the 6K slash 4K photo mode so you can choose however you like for that. Uh, shutter type auto, I don't think there's anything new in here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is all the same as it's been. So you'll auto mechanical, electronic, front curtain, electronic, electronic plus noise. Actually, the electronic plus noise reduction might be new. Um, this uses a black frame to do noise reduction. It's quite an interesting thing. So I haven't been able to play with this yet, but I, I do believe that's a new, new function in there. Shutter delay, nothing new in there. Soft timer, nothing new in that. So, okay, that is everything on the main photo menu. So now we're going to switch over to the video menu.